And indeed, what we did uh, was uh, a research activity on quality. And the research started, uh, as Stefania was saying, and Anna was saying as well during her presentation, uh, th started uh, from another uh, European project, Open Cooperation, and many of you here already know a lot about it, so I don't have to uh, talk about it. So, as Stefania was saying, Open Cooperation has uh, its main aim to um, increase the transparency and the number of information at an international level that can enrich but or make easier uh, the access in order to assess their position uh, compared to uh, some uh, other aspects like uh, social responsibility, social dialogue, uh, diversity, uh, the financial position and the accessibility to uh, disabled people and difficult con uh, working conditions. So what we did uh, was to start from uh, what Open Cooperation did and um, they worked on quantity. Uh, that means that uh, they were gathering a lot of data, but uh, the uh, trends that go beyond what can be codified in figures or uh, certificates, uh, uh, at the moment, uh, uh, these uh, information are a bit hidden. So our task was to select with our working group a certain number of uh, multinationals that we could analyze uh, in a more detailed way. What are the um, topics that we have analyzed and which multinationals were selected? Uh, well, the topics are the topics mentioned in the project and that Stefania was talking about. We try to understand the uh, level and the procedures uh, uh, that these multinationals are using and their activities, uh, their multi-sectoral activities in uh, sectors that are different uh, from those that we have already identified uh, there. So these are the main sectors of these multinationals and we've analyzed negative or positive behaviors uh, that uh, come as a consequence of these changes. And we also analyze how they're managed and or if uh, they're managed. Uh, uh, our sources are public sources or official sources and so um, the annual financial reports, the uh, Eurofund restructuring database, uh, the documents uh, by the European Antitrust and some news for some of the um, more recent information. Um, as far as um, financial balance sheet are concerned, we have already analyzed in Open Cooperation Works, so we have not analyzed it again. But we have to bear in mind that in Open Cooperation, these are not considered in the same way. So if we had the chance to uh, analyze these data in a more detailed way, um, maybe we could um, grasp other aspects of uh, knowledge. If we look at the multinationals that we analyzed, uh, those selected multinationals, uh, they come from six uh, sectors, different sectors, uh, food sector, uh, luxury goods, uh, automotive, banking, and the huge uh, sector, digital sector. Uh, that uh, I called like this in order to gather different multinationals and uh, two multinationals that are working through platforms. What I will do in order to be as short as possible, um, I will try to give you a brief summary of all these multinationals that we have analyzed pointing out the main aspects and uh, that are relevant to the main topics, uh, digitalization, multi-sectoral activities or intersectoral activities, and uh, the consequences that are coming from these changes. Uh, we'll start with the food sector. Uh, we have analyzed uh, Nestle and Lactalis 
First of all, uh, it's easy to talk about lactalis. There's nothing to say about it. And even in the open cooperation ranking, the position is a bit low for accessibility to their information. So our work on quality has only confirmed what we already know. And uh, it's impossible to know something more about the aspects that we were analyzing. Uh, the, for Nestle, we have a different situation. Um, for the dig digitalization, we have seen that there's uh, high attention on the issue, and they are even collaborating officially because we've seen that in uh, official documents uh, that they are collaborating with Samsung and part of this stuff uh, in San Francisco in order to uh, grasp all the progress that have been made through their activity uh, through research uh, in Silicon Valley. It might be interesting to analyze all the context contents of their uh, report on the collaboration with uh, um, Samsung. We know that uh, Nestle is uh, working on the food sector and they have a wide range of products to offer, but they're trying to go beyond that and start to uh, sell their own services and this is something that we'll see in other multinationals coming going from a product to uh, a service so they're trying to um, use more technological tools to monitor their health their well-being in order to to answer this huge demand, they are trying to develop new apps and new services to monitor their well-being, their health, and this uh, matched with a wide range of products. Uh, another aspect that is really interesting for Nestlé, but might be said for other multinationals, is the fact that the uh, product itself is changing in Nestlé, for instance, the difference that we see in these uh, sectors uh, in coming from uh, medicine and the pharmaceutical sector, uh, there's a difference between the food sector and the pharmaceutical sector and the, there's less uh, this difference is less evident now so Nestle is uh, um, developing uh, and designing products that uh, can uh, respond to the needs to the uh, pharmaceutical sector or medicine medicine sector and uh, cosmetic products uh, these are changes that uh, Nestle is going through through investment and they're investing in uh, research and development and more generally they're uh, um, investing in improving uh, consumption in products that are considered as traditional uh, if we think about coffee is a traditional product in countries uh, where coffee is very important is that tradi in the traditional culture nestle has managed to modify some habits uh, in consumers and uh, domestic procedures that uh, is not something so obvious. Uh, for restructuring product um, process, uh, there are several uh, processes that have been going on. Uh, uh, they are trying to expand themselves and they want to cut on their staff. Uh, and last year there was an interest, interesting case, uh, uh, this uh, case that was uh, linked to uh, restructuring the ice cream sector uh, through joint venture with a multinational in the UK. They restructured the whole sector and uh, they had to cut on their staff. If we go on to luxury goods we analyze the caring and louis vuitton for uh, this uh, sector and uh, we can say that both are active uh, in uh, 
safeguarding uh, products in the luxury goods uh, sector uh, in fashion, but not only because Louis Vuitton is going far beyond that. Uh, it includes uh, jewelry, cosmetics, and wines and alcohols in more in general and uh, in cosmetics uh, um Stefania already mentioned it uh, that they are working on this and uh, on this site uh, if we analyze the digitalization of all these two multinationals one thing that is very interesting is their um their selling chain how uh, they sell their products. Uh, the uh, trade sector is uh, changing radically because of the possibility of the of uh, by e-commerce, uh, and of course these multinationals are uh, using these uh, changes. What are the characteristics of these changes? Well, we can say that uh, uh, they are um, offering an omnichannel experience. Uh, this means that the customer is uh, the the center of their activity, and this is uh, one of the main aim of caring at the customer. So, is at the core of a network of a rich network of channels that can help selling from the. Um, uh, brick and mortar shops to the digital uh, shop so that the customer can easily choose. Uh, what is interesting here is the fact that the uh, shop, the real shop is uh, changing. This does not mean that the shop uh, have to dis has to disappear. Sometimes it happens in other sectors as well. But in this case, uh, sh the, the shop where you might go to buy your products, um, we are going to uh, change our uh, our idea of it so is uh, some it's a place where you go to make an experience we are talking about a certain kind of goods but what is important here is the fact that the shop is changing is where you go to have an experience and you will not necessarily buy something so the world is uh, turning around uh, the uh, sale of this product um, if we still talk about this sector. Uh, Sephora, um, Stefania was talking about Sephora, uh, that is part of Louis Vuitton, and they take care of uh, selling uh, cosmetics products and um, through um, a network of uh, shops that is uh, wide and widespread all over the world. Uh, this is an example of how. They uh, make use of uh, technologies and uh, digital uh, tools in order to modify the customer experience. Uh, uh, so you you're not only going to buy your lipstick or some other cosmetics in a shop, but uh, uh, not only through the, the staff, but uh, through what is offered by digital technologies, you um, are helped through uh, some assistance uh, for a product. And this is what the system is assessing. They are assessing your skin, and they tell you that this is the type of lipstick that you need. And your um, you're in contact with other people and you have this virtual relationship that can help you um, uh, can help you be to be involved in a group in a wider group and this is an example in cosmetics that you can uh, already see but you can see also in other sector uh, if we talk about multi-sectorality uh, these are multinationals that are already multi-sectorial uh, Louis Vuitton uh, has uh, um, a wide range of uh, products and sectors that he's, uh, it is active in and uh, it is true that even rich people can cry, but we have not seen so far uh, restructuring procedures uh, uh, that can be compared to other cases. Uh, um, they have gone uh, 
through minor changes and these are multinationals that are trying to safeguard uh, markets uh, that are expanding and expanding areas uh, where uh, of course uh, they have uh, a chance to uh, succeed. Uh, then we can go on to the automotive sector. This is a sector where uh, they are going through some changes uh, because of digitalization. I will be brief on processes that uh, uh, have uh, had an impact. There's been a high attention in, and a high investment in uh, mechanics. Uh, uh, for instance, you can uh, think about the industry 4.0 and uh, robots, but we should uh, bear in mind that these kind of multinationals, um, we have analyzed, for instance, CNH and Volkswagen, their uh, kind of automation and contents and digital contents have been uh, quite high even in the past so their uh, changes is not the major changes were not in the digitalization but the real change is uh, in their core products that these multinationals are experiences and this uh, is particularly true for Volkswagen I'm talking about what is happening in this uh, sector. So from uh, selling a private uh, car, they're going through, they're going to um, the um, purchase of um, a service. This is something that we will see even outside the uh, area that is directly linked to the automotive sector because this is a part of a market where uh, several stakeholders are uh, um, active and that is rapidly growing. So multi-sectorality in this case uh, is in these change uh, uh, from products to uh, services. In this case, the service is that of mobility. Uh, for Volkswagen, we can give an example. Uh, Volkswagen has already started an activity within its area, uh, the Moya Group. Uh, this is a company that has as its main aim to sell and offer uh, mobility that can be accessible to everybody without owning a car. So they developed a series of uh, strategies to meet their targets. Uh, they will create, uh, they have created an app or carpooling solution and an ag agreement with a get uh, a rent rental uh, company and they will offer on-demand mobility. We should say that if we consider financial area for Volkswagen, they were already present for long-term renting and uh, uh, they want to um, to also make use of short-term rental. Uh, of course, these processes have an impact for restructuring because uh, you can easily understand how changing radically part of the core business of a multinational uh, there's a consequence in uh, changing the characteristics of their activity. And of course, we saw uh, official documents to uh, assess uh, the uh, changes and so we can um, say that uh, there have been a sharp reduction of the workplace, approximately 30,000 worldwide. The last point that I would like to point out uh, concerning Volkswagen and of course for the differences with uh, CNH, there are only two elements that I might mention. On the one hand, Volkswagen is one of the few cases where you can uh, find an agreement uh, that involves all uh, providers in sharing information and uh, um, 
particularly concerning their strategies and uh, thematic areas for environmental uh, work rights uh, and uh, business relationships that should be transparent. So Volkswagen is one of the few cases where um, amongst those that we have analyzed, uh, they have decided to uh, widen their good practices uh, to providers and uh, business partners that are outside their area. Uh, uh, this was something that Stefania was mentioning as well in her introduction. But uh, we can also say that this agreement is not one of the most advanced agreements uh, because uh, they will stop at the first line of the providers, but they will not go through the, all, uh, the whole uh, supply chain. Uh, Another aspect that we might mention uh, concerning the differences between the two groups is uh, the uh, way uh, that these uh, multinationals have uh, managed uh, difficult uh, cases, uh, complex situations uh, for uh, transparencies. Uh, uh, Volkswagen for uh, the diesel gate. If we read the, their social uh, reports, they are talking about these uh, case and they're talking about sanctions and they're open to share information. But it is quite the opposite for a Fiat because it was condemned for their conduct that was against trade unions. Um, we do not find uh, any um, example uh, in their reports. So if you don't know about it, you wouldn't know through their reports. So they have different behaviors in the same sector. I will go on now to the banking sector. We have analyzed uh, three uh, situation three uh, multinationals BNP Paribas, Nordia, and Unicredit. Uh, for digitalization, it is uh, clear that this is one of the sectors that have been uh, going through these uh, processes where transformations are more evident and everyone can easily see, even as a consumer. Well, actually, the changes that we've seen concerns accessibility to uh, banking services. Uh, the main aim uh, for the um, more advanced and wider group is uh, uh, mass customization. That, that means that every individual through their smartphone can have uh, full accessibility to all services for the banking sector, for uh, payment methods and uh, assurances. So this is uh, the a way to uh, avoid having uh, mediation. And these are processes, pr production processes used by multinationals. This has an impact on uh, work in terms of quantity and quality for skills and um, um, knowledge. In this case, we have a full merger between uh, the characteristics of the banking sector and the possibility of the um, through technologies. Uh, Unicredit uh, has uh, already uh, developed a, a startup fintech where Unicredit invests in these startups. And on the one hand, they offer new services uh, using digital technologies uh, uh, for uh, banking and insurance uh, services, but this is a way to be directly in contact with uh, a new way of offering service. On the other hand, these investments are offered uh, to customers as a financial product. So this is a new way of uh, operating in the, bank in the banking sector. The other aspect that I would like to point out, I will be brief in order not to uh, be too um, late. We in uh, BNP Paribas, in, because these groups were already active uh, through uh, long-term rental and uh, so leasing, uh, in the automotive sector, BNP Paribas, through Aval, 
is already present in leasing and smart mobility for a short-term rental. Uh, so these two areas might seem on the opposite sides. Um, a sector like the automotive that is mainly a manufacturing sector and the banking sector, somehow they are competing in the same market. Of course, there are some uh, procedures, uh, restructuring procedures that are going on for uh, workforce because uh, in uh, digital tools for the banking sector can uh, more easily than in other sector replace uh, uh, workforce through uh, artificial intelligence. Then we will end up with the digital sector where we have Samsung, Google, and more particularly Alphabet. That is uh, what is uh, uh, the um, main group of Google. We have these three uh, groups that are different. Uh, Samsung is uh, highly diversified more than the other two groups and is uh, present in areas that are different in all the products that we know for hardwares, but also uh, in, uh, um, in, in the insurance and in uh, other areas so you can easily see that it is highly di diversified and some other activities that are already well structured. Uh, the alphabet group for Google is different. Uh, uh, Google is the main business for alphabet but they have a series of activities that have as their main task to um, to work on technologies, so they want to uh, study new, to analyze new opportunities uh, deriving from um, technologies, digital technologies in uh, different sectors. Uh, for instance, uh, in health, in the health sector, and I will talk about it more deeply uh, later on. Uh, what they want to do is to grasp new opportunities offered uh, through. Uh, digital innovation. Even in this case, uh, for uh, restructuring procedures, we have not uh, uh, seen uh, these uh, res restructuring uh, processes. Uh, they are, uh, these groups are active in new markets. What we could see is that they have uh, um, manage to uh, deal with uh, fiscal um, pro procedures uh, for competition and uh, uh, so the negative uh, procedure we might find can be found in the financial uh, sector. The last part that we have analyzed is uh, the sector of platforms uh, with Rocket Internet and Deliveroo. Uh, we are talking about platforms, but these groups are different uh, because uh, Deliveroo is using the algorithm uh, digital technologies, but their uh, service is uh, traditional. So basically is home delivery of food. Uh, Rocket Internet aims at working as a window for selected businesses and products in different sectors. Delivery is uh, mainly food delivery. For the moment, we have no evidence uh, for uh, multi sectoriality. Rocket Internet was born as a multi sectorial group. The practices that we have uh, analyzed uh, are linked to the uh, different uh, legal framework in the European Union for Deliveroo and other companies, uh, uh, these uh, legal frameworks are uh, what help us to position our workers, uh, so independent contractor or employee. To sum up, I would like to say what uh, Stefania has already said in her introduction. 
what is happening in these areas is that we have new areas, new areas that are interesting for uh, companies uh, and particularly for multinationals. And these areas cannot be um, called sectors. These are areas of interest where we have possibilities and are attracting multinationals that are coming from different sectors and they have to uh, change for that reason. We have uh, outlined through our activities three main areas. One is health and well-being more in general. We have uh, outlined some uh, issues uh, for the need of well-being and also we have to bear in mind uh, aging, uh, especially in some areas of the world. Uh, these uh, phenomena can um, pose new uh, challenges and uh, so we have uh, analyzed uh, Alphabet Google with their company, uh, Calico, that is conducting research and development in health and medicine. And their main aim is to answer the needs of an aging population. And what I was saying about Nestle, they are collaborating with uh, Samsung, uh, going uh, from their traditional production to offering um, the orientation for a healthy lifestyle and all the products that are linked to that. And Samsung that is already uh, present in a wide part of our markets uh, in emerging markets for the uh, digital area. And they are already producing some devices for health monitoring. The other area of interest is mobility. We have car producers like Volkswagen and uh, financial multinationals uh, like Arval and BNP Paribas that are both active in mobility because uh, the transformation they are going through is uh, purchasing uh, mobility services rather than buying a car. And then we have the sector of disintermediation uh, from different point of views. We have uh, grasped uh, these um, mainly in the financial and insurance uh, sector, uh, people will be able to directly access and manage uh, uh, by themselves in this sector. And the last few things that I would like to say before uh, concluding is, um, um, is a matter concerning open cooperation. This is a project that is already well advanced, but there uh, it is still um, something that could be developed further. These uh, trends uh, that are complex and uh, dynamic are not fully grasped by the analysis, so uh, it might be needed to introduce a new uh, way to uh, grasp this transformation um, because now we we have given just a general view uh, in order to combine different sector and this example might be, uh, for example, might be done through the analysis of multinationals where they are investing and uh, trying to see what their official investments, uh, not only uh, through rumors, but trying to find evidence through data uh, to understand what are their um, mergers and uh, acquisitions this might uh, be useful to understand this strategy. Uh, this is the end, and thank you for your attention.